Well, hello, friends, and thank you for starting the day off in the Word of God. Today we're looking specifically at Matthew chapter 8. And if you look at Matthew chapter 8 and just kind of read through it in just a, a bit of a cursory reading, you'll notice that it's a continuous uh, storytelling of miracle after miracle after miracle. Uh, you have the miracle of the healing of leprosy. You have the miracle of the healing of paralysis. You have the miracle of the fever in Peter's mother-in-law. On and on, ending with the miracle of Jesus uh, casting the demons out of the demoniac that had terrorized his country for who knows how long. And it's just all these different miracles. And, and you know, sadly, a lot of times we come to a chapter like this, and, and because it may not have the, the deep, rich doctrinal teachings of an epistle um, or some of the other aspects of the, na the, the gospel narrative, we might just quickly go right through it and dismiss it. But we really shouldn't do that. We, we should really hone in on what's being communicated to us here in in our day and in our time. And, and I think the, really the, the key word is the word faith. Uh, because we see two strong um, opposite, you know, opposite reactions here. Two, two dynamically different opposite, you know, reactions here. One, kind of characterized by the centurion. We're, we're told there's a centurion that comes to Jesus and requests that Jesus would heal his servant. He even says this, hey, I know <clears throat> Uh, he, he says, uh, I think it's in verse 5, when, when he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, Lord, my servant's lying at home, paralyzed in terrible agony. Jesus says, am I to come to heal him? Lord, the centurion replied, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. And he goes on to give an illustration how he is a man of authority and he yields that authority, basically saying, Jesus, I know you have authority. I know you have power. And it happens strictly by your spoken word. So Jesus, in hearing this, it says in verse 10, was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with so great a faith. And so here we see an, a non-Israelite, one who is linked with the Romans, which would have made him an outcast by the Jewish people, demonstrating, according to Jesus, extraordinary faith. Such a faith that would not even require Jesus to come to his house. He said, hey, I'm not even worried to have you in my house. But if you just say it, it will be so. Jesus says this is an extraordinary faith. That's what we've got to have. We should have extraordinary faith. Uh, and I think to some degree, modernity has robbed us of some of that. Uh, you know, The advances in technology, the advances in medicine. Uh, to some degree, our maybe our belief that God still performs miracles has waned a little bit. And that's just not biblically accurate. The same power, the, the, you know, the song says, that raised Jesus from the dead is still actively working among people. It's simply our faith and our lack of faith that is hindering our ability to experience and then witness the miracle power of God. I really believe that. And it's not about any certain person having certain incantations or, or certain direct lines, you know, these quote-unquote miracle work, you know, healing uh, prosperity preachers and stuff. That's not it at all. It's about faith. And what's fascinating is, is that we have this centurion, most likely a non-Jew, demonstrating tremendous faith. Then we juxtapose that on down a little further, starting in verse 23, with the disciples. It says they're following him. It says a violent storm arose to the point where they were terrified. It says they said, you know, but what was Jesus doing? Well, according to verse 24, he was sleeping. He was quite relaxed with the circumstances. But here are these experienced fishermen, these experienced seamen. They'd seen storms come. They'd seen storms go. This storm was obviously way outside the norm of their experience. And it terrified them. But Jesus was still calm and secured. He was sleeping. And so we said the disciples come to him. They say, Lord, save us or we're going to die. <clears throat> and what's, what's amazing to me is that Jesus rebukes them. He basically says this, why are you afraid, you of little faith? He's basically saying, don't you understand that I'm with you, you're with me. And as long as I'm with you and you're with me, you will not be harmed. I will protect you. I will provide with you. The power that you've seen unleashed in all these healings so far is the same power that is now protecting you. And he gets up and he rebukes the wind and the sea. Calm comes immediately. And according to verse 27, we're told that the disciples were amazed. What kind of man is this? 
You know, friends, we need to be recaptured by the amazement of who God is again as well. With so many things happening around us, so much destruction, so much disease, so much that's causing us distress and to some degree depression, discouragement, all these different things are happening right now. We're like the disciples and we're crying out, Lord, don't you care that we're going to die? Lord, don't you care that I've received this diagnosis? Lord, don't you care that this destruction is taking place around the world in our community? Lord, don't you care that people are dying? Lord, don't you care? And Jesus is simply saying, oh, you of little faith. Hey, we have to be amazed. We've got to be recaptured by the amazement of who Jesus is. We've got to be recaptured by that faith that trusts him, that he will indeed work all things together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. And when we are gripped by that faith, we trust him. We trust him to bring about his determined purpose and his desired end to whatever the scenario and the situation is. So as you're reading through Matthew chapter 8 today, focus in on these miracles. Really just pause and give thought to what if you were the one in the place of the recipient of the miracle. Because in a sense, you are. Salvation is nothing less than a miracle. It is a gracious gift given to us by God that we receive by grace through faith. It is a miracle. And just as God performed these miracles through Christ, just as Jesus performed these miracles among the people in in these various regions that should have rendered great faith among the disciples, we need to be gripped by that same great faith, and we need to live with an amazement and an expectation that our Lord will indeed fulfill his plan and purpose by his power through and in us. Well, I pray your day is going. I pray your day goes well. I pray you make plans to be with us tonight. A wana for our children, worship for our students, a time of prayer and Bible study for the adults as well, where we really dig into the Word. But more importantly, a time. Well, but along with that, though, a time of fellowship and a time of just to come together for encouragement as well. And we need that. So I look forward to seeing you tonight. As your day goes along, remember you're called by God to live sent.